Welcome to this video lecture for HEAL 518 on correlation and regression analysis. This is only going to be a, a toe in the water of this topic, and I'm just going to cover the basics. So we're going to begin with just looking at the differences between correlation and regression. These are two of the types of inferential statistics that are available when you are looking at uh, association between variables and you're looking at causality. We're also going to dig a little deeper into correlation, looking at the uh, correlation coefficient that is calculated, R. And then we're going to look at how to do that in Google Sheets. And then finally, we'll just talk about regression, simple linear regression, how to understand the regression equation. As a reminder, inferential statistics is about making inferences from a sample. So we collect a sample from a population of interest as part of our data collection in a study. And then we take that sample and ask the question, is what we are seeing here in, in the sample real? Is this a real uh, um, thing happening that represents what's going on in the population? And we can use our sample to make predictions or to draw conclusions about our population using inferential statistics. So as a reminder, there are two types of inferences. The first is relationships between variables. So we can look at the differences, for example, uh, excuse me, the relationships between uh, participating in football and the incidence of concussions. We can also look at differences between people who participate in football um, versus those who do not and their incidence of concussions. And we look for differences between groups. And so we, we do need some more sophisticated types of inferences, uh, statistical uh, tests to look at these different inferences beyond just their t-tests beyond chi-squares and ANOVA. And uh, there are some tools in our arsenal to do that. So let's look at them. So first of all, uh, correlation and regression are often confused. And you often hear people say correlation does not equal causation. Well, correlation does not equal regression is what I hear in my head most often. And um, most of my work um, is focused on one of these and then the other. They sort of um, build on one another when you're looking at relationships between variables and then trying to understand whether or not uh, one variable um, causes another variable to occur. Um, and so and there's some key differences here. So first of all, correlation examines relationships between variables. Does that relationship exist? These are usually continuous variables. Um, and you look at the strength of that relationship when you use correlational analysis. So um, what uh, is there a relationship and how strong is it? So you can actually quantify the strength of that association. The correlation between the, those um, two, two variables, which I'll call X and Y, um, is the same no matter which direction you go in. So the correlation between Y and X is, you know, it's the same as between our X and Y and vice versa. So, um, so there's uh, no difference in direction and correlation is based on a single point in time. Um, regression, on the other hand, looks at causality. So does one variable affect the other? Um, so when we're looking at cause and effect relationships, you are going to be performing regression analysis to do that. Um, any paper that does not include a regression analysis and claims that one thing causes another is fibbing. Um, it does not assess the strength of association, so there's no assessment of magnitude here. It's just determining whether there is a cause and effect. Um, thing. So you will do correlational analysis first and then assess the, the relationships. And then you can do a regression analysis and you can examine the what percentage of variance is explained um, in your dependent variable by your explanatory variable. Regression on X and Y and Y on X get different results, so they are um, directional. And you're often looking for the best fitting line. So the scatter plot is the visualization tool for correlation. And when we do that visualization, we can um, sometimes see a line and we can fit a line. And the regression um, is about getting at the best fitting line when you look at those that data. So you start by building a relationship. If a relation exists, exists, then you have to ask the question about cause and effect. And it may not make sense that two variables have a relationship. 
Um, so you have to kind of take a step back and ask, is this something in real life I would think that there one would cause the other? For example, the amount of Diet Coke that I drink may not be related to how much sleep I get, but it might. Um, but uh, my, my gender identity may not have anything to do with how much Diet Coke I drink, for example. So things have to make sense, um, and that needs to be asked before you decide what to do with your data. So start with a good scientific question. Now let's dig into correlation. So I mentioned we use scatter plots to visualize correlated, um, potentially correlated data, and these um, both have to be continuous variables. So we examine two variables in a graph, we plot them against one another on the x and y axes, and we look for correlation. And you can see very strong examples here of this data. I stole this graphic from Salesforce, thank you. It's a great graphic that explains the three kinds of correlations that we commonly find. So first you can get a positive correlation, which looks very strongly linear. And here two, the two variables move in the same direction, and we call that positive correlation. But when two variables move in opposite directions, so for example, in, in one increases in, uh, an increase in one variable means a decrease in the other, uh, that is a negative correlation. So you can see the opposite kind of linear relationship emerging in the second graph. And then finally, there's real no correlation obvious um, in the final graph where there's no obvious relationship between those two variables. And so that is no correlation. So when we want to do analysis, we need to come up with some kind of statistic to represent the result of correlation. And that is what we call the correlation coefficient. This measures the degree of association between variables, those two variables. And this is also called R. Um, it's also interchangeably called Pearson's correlation coefficient, named for Pearson, who came up with the measure. And it's also referred to as measure of linear association. So you can hear those interchangeably spoken of in statistics. Now, there are different values, values you can get for correlation, but the range is from negative 1 to positive 1 with zero being no correlation. So if you have a negative correlation, you have a negative one through up to zero. And then as you go past zero up to positive one, that is positive correlation. So you will calculate R and then you can match it against this uh, scale and figure out whether or not you have a negative or positive correlation or no correlation at all. I will mention that if you are just under zero, you can often sometimes say there's really no correlation going on. Depends on how weak that correlation happens to be. Um, so you have to make a good judgment based on all of your data. So let's look at this in Google Sheets. I will mention that the function corel, or corel, I'm never sure how to pronounce that, um, is exactly the same in Excel. So if you want to do this in Excel, you can use the data analysis tab in Excel, but in Google Sheets, you just put in the function corel and you enter your two ranges for the Y and the X. Now, I use two different data sets arbitrarily, neither having any meaning to the other, so hospitalizations and daily temperature in this example, um, so plotting temperature and hospitalization. They could go on either axis um, at this point because I wasn't. there's really no relationship here, so I was making this up, but just to show that there is no relationship between these two, but this is how you would actually put it into Google Sheets. Um, but using the corel function and then highlighting the two, um, two uh, ranges. Now you would ordinarily start with y and then x, and your y um, is your dependent variable typically. So again, this was fictitious and not re not real, but I would keep that in mind. So you just pop that in. You do not have to highlight the top here. You do not have to highlight the cell with the name, but it will actually bypass that name. So if you accidentally include it, um, your formula will ignore it. So what's regression? So I mentioned that correlation looks at relationships and you can kind of say A, you know, A is correlated with B, B is correlated with A and the direction doesn't matter. But in regression, we're asking the question, how much does Y change with X? Now, reminder, y is the dependent variable. It's the thing you're trying to move, your outcome variable. Like systolic blood pressure, if you're taking a medication, your medication in this case is x, the independent variable. The x is trying to um, change y. So how much does y change with x? So what we do here is to create a regression equation that basically says the average value of x is a function of y, and we represent that with an equation. 
and here's that equation. So essentially, we assume that uh, because this equation is uh, written to be linear, this relationship is linear, much like we saw in the correlation graph. So you do the correlation. You find a positive correlation or negative correlation, but there's a linear relationship that you can visually see in the scatter plot. And then you try to fit the best line, which is typically um, it is typically linear, although that is not always the case, and it depends on what kind of vari variables you have. So in this case, I am talking about two um, continuous variables. So let's take a look at this equation a little bit more because we've got some uh, additional letters here we got to understand. So in a simple regression equation, um, it might seem a little bit daunting to look at this, but let's break it down. So we've, of course, got our y. Y is our dependent variable. So this is the thing we want to change. And in health promotion work, it's the thing we want to help people with. So for example, we want people who have diabetes to lower their HbA1c. And we might want to do that with exercise. So that's x, our de ind independent variable, our predictor, our explanatory variable. The job of x is to explain variation in y. The dependent variable is also called sort of the response variable or outcome variables. It's what we are predicting and explaining in the world. So we want to understand if you do something with X, what happens to Y? And we sometimes in our work um, test out programs or ideas or policies and our ideas um, and policies and treatments. X is always the treatment program or policy doesn't matter uh, what you're doing, it's never Y. So just recall, X is always going to be your program, your intervention, your policy. And that's what you're going to use to predict or explain what happens to Y. So if you're trying to change something, you're trying to change Y. So let's look at these other things. So A is a constant, and this is really alpha. Um, it's represented as A here because it's easier to read. But it's our value of Y when X is 0. And that can be zeroed out by um, a number of things in stats. We'll go through this um, in a later lecture. Um, we also have beta. Now, beta is the coefficient of x. And this is what we're going to try to calculate. This is how much y changes for every single unit of x. And this is also known as the slope. If you've ever plotted a line in a scatter plot, you know that there is a slope to that line. So how much is that slope? How much does it differ from the horizontal axis? So at the horizontal axis, that slope is zero. But as you move it upwards, that uh, that beta becomes more than zero. So that is also known as uh, the, the beta or coefficient. Um, and E is error. So that's a standard error here in this equation. So accounting for um, error is very important. Some people leave this out of the equation, but you should always include that in the equation. So let's look at this as an example, just talk it through a little bit more. Um, if we apply this just to a very simple height and weight um, example, I'm just going to put weight here for the y. And let's talk about what x could be here. Um, so I put in an alpha of, of 81. And my beta here is 2.3. And I'm going to say that um, weight, my, my x, things could explain my weight, could be height. So I could assume this could be height. But I might also be changing my program or a drug. Or I could be um, changing a policy or implementing sidewalks in my community. And then, of course, I have standard error. And so that's kind of how you apply what that equation looks like. And as you go, you will also, as you pursue regression more fully, um, going beyond simple regression, you can add many different variables or what we can call control variables. You can add variables to build this equation into a model. So if you think there are things that are important that might affect um, the relationships here, like confounders or effect modifiers, you can add them, like income or education. But we will look that, at that at another time. Okay, so let's look at the interpretation, what you might get up as an output for your regression analysis. So the measure of association that you're going to look for is your R-squared value. Now, and oftentimes when you're doing uh, work in Excel or Google Sheets, and you're doing a simple regression with just two variables, it's a very variant analysis, you will get an R-squared generated for you by just putting in a line in. You can actually check a box that allows you to put the R-squared value in. But that basically just tells you our, what, what's going on here. And you can see here um, the value is 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95, 0.95
it's not a great value for this. Again, this is fictitious and not real data, and there's no relationship um, here, although it looks very linear. It's a great line. And it looks like, wow, this, this should be real, but it's actually not real. So just ignore the fact that this doesn't have a relationship. Um, SEB is a standard error of the computed value of of beta, so that is important to include. And F is a test for statistical significance of the regression equation. So if you want to know whether or not you can reject the null hypothesis in your output, you need to find the F statistic. And that will tell you whether or not um, you should reject the null. So that's just a very, very basic overview of the difference between correlation and regression analysis and some of the basic words that you'll hear. Um, it's important to dig into this by actually doing the regression, doing the correlation work. Um, and in regression work in particular, it's very difficult to do using packages like Google Sheets and Excel, but you can do it, um, particularly if your data is continuous and you have a lot of tools um, using your graphs that you can use. You can use data analysis tools within both of those packages. But if you want to do multivariable or multivariate analysis um, using regression techniques and you have categorical variables, um, it becomes more complicated. So that's all for now. I'll see you next time.